Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on another episode of the Workplace Wellness Series. On this episode, we are going to look at deep cleaning and disinfection as an essential tool in preparing the workplace for reopening. Now, the inclusion of deep cleaning and disinfection in your plan to reopen is an indispensable issue. It is aimed at reducing the risk of exposure to the virus that causes COVID-19. Cleaning and disinfection requires careful planning. So we we'll look at cleaning and disinfection as two different processes. What the differences are? There's so much confusion about the two. So we'll throw some light on that. We we'll look at what plants should be put in place for cleaning and disinfection, what processes should be followed to implement your plants and how to monitor and review and react to your cleaning and disinfection processes. Now there's so much confusion about cleaning and disinfection and what the differences are and what each one of them is aimed at achieving. Now, in professional cleaning, there's what is called cleaning for appearance and cleaning for health. Now, cleaning generally is the collection and removal of dirt and pathogens from a given surface through the use of a cleaning agent and mechanical action. Now, your cleaning agent could be uh, any detergent and the mechanical action, so what the agent actually does is to emulsify and break soil to be collected and removed. So your mechanical action could involve manual scrubbing or scrubbing with any cleaning equipment. Now disinfection is a germ control process. So it is used to remove bacteria, virus, through the application of one, an EPA approved chemical, and two, the chemical should have a kill rate of 99.999%. So two things are key for disinfection. The agent that you're using for disinfection should be an approved one by the EPA and it should have a kill rate of 99.99%. Now the, the kill rate varies from continent to continent. In the US it's 99.9999%. In Europe it's lesser. But the difference between cleaning and disinfection is that one precedes the other. Cleaning precedes disinfection. There are situations where you can do the two together at the same time, but they are two different exercises. Now let's look at your cleaning and disinfection plan. As a basis for your cleaning plan should be the findings from your risk analysis that you had conducted. This will inform your plan in terms of the levels of exposure at your workspace, e.g. what the main touch points are, what kind of surfaces and materials make up the area, are they soft surfaces or hard surfaces that requires different method of cleaning and disinfection, what surfaces need both cleaning and disinfection or either of the two. Then you also need to select appropriate equipment and tools would they be foggers, UV lights? You also need to select uh, appropriate PPEs, so gloves, uh, face mask, disposable coveralls, and what have you. Then what disinfectants have to be selected? Do you have the SD sheets? Do you know the dilution ratios? So your risk assessment will also inform you on the selection of staff, the level of training that is needed for them, uh, 
Um, you need to consider whether they are trained in high risk cleaning and you need to also uh, be informed on how to zone map and color code your areas. Now considering the uh, implementation of your cleaning plan, there's a basic sequence that has to be followed. Number one, you need to conduct a toolbox meeting to brief your team on the task and your timelines and what each individual member of the team is responsible for. Then the next step is you have to consider the sequence of clean. So uh, you clean from the cleanest areas to the dirtiest area. So you can start cleaning from offices and then end up with washrooms which are the most contaminated areas. Then you also need to implement the 3D method of cleaning. So you start from the top, so your ceilings, your walls, and then you come to the floors. After cleaning, you have to pay particular attention to the high touch points. Your basic cleaning tasks should cover the following. So emptying and cleaning of your dustbins, you dust above uh, floor surfaces, you do dusting, you do wiping, wash sinks, WCs, etc. Where you have soft floors like carpets, you vacuum clean them, sweep hard floors, scrub hard floors if there's a need to. Now, in implementing your disinfection plants, you should look at selecting the approved disinfectant, follow the instructions on the labels for safety, ensure that your guys or the team implementing the exercise are in the correct PPEs. So you follow the dilution ratios as well. So for instance, um, for chlorine based disinfectants, the CDC, WHO have given the dilution ratios and you need to follow. For every different chemical, there's a dilution ratio that has to be followed. So read the label. Then you start disinfecting surfaces from the cleanest to the dirtiest. Now, always start your actual, the actual application of disinfectants to surfaces by doing your high touch points first. Then you can use any of the appropriate methods of application such as fogging, misting, spraying to follow with the high touch points. Then ensure that the surfaces remain visibly wet to ensure that they have adequate contact time with the surface for the chemical to be effective. So once you're done with disinfection, you need to monitor the outcome. So you need to do some bit of quality control. So you can conduct visual inspection of the work done to confirm that the scope based on your risk assessment has been covered. One other recommended way of checking to ensure that your disinfection processes have been effective is to do swap testing by using the, the ATP monitoring machine to swap surfaces, test them, see the levels of contamination on the surfaces. So you can do this before and after the disinfection to compare the two outcomes and see how much germs you have taken off the surface then based on uh, the outcome of your test you can review the process as you go on and at some point if you have to reduce the frequencies and the levels of disinfection that you carry out or maybe in the course of time you would have realized that your risk has also increased so you can also uh, beef up in effect Cleaning and disinfection 
are two entirely different processes. They are both vital for preparing the workplace for reopening. It should be carefully planned and executed so that you get the full benefit of the exercise. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next episode. Please don't forget to keep your physical distance, but also remember to stay socially connected.